Grace and peace, you guys. It is your girl, April Chapman, here from the Standard of Truth podcast. And today, listen, I was hesitant on actually doing this video because I was like, you know what? Do I really want to give attention to such foolish shenanigans? But I decided to take a moment and do it because I felt it was important. What am I talking about? All right. So in churchianity news, we have Bishop Noel Jones, who is the senior pastor of the church, the refuge church out on the West Coast. Can't remember the name. I'll link. I'm not going to link it below. Um, I'll link, I'll, I'll mention or type out the proper name of the church because I'm probably butchering it really, really bad. But the church out in the West Coast, Bishop Noel Jones is the senior pastor. And if you were remotely connected to Christian Reality TV several years ago, he was one of the pastors on the now defunct series, Preachers of LA. Well, if you happen to watch him in that series, you would have known that he has been dating since Jesus was an infant a woman by the name of Loretta like she was his longtime girlfriend and back then on the show you know she was hoping that maybe they would get married and he was given all of these reasons why he didn't want to get married well most recently in front of his congregation if this is what you want to call it he calls himself proposing to Loretta now that he is 72 years old and about to probably kill over and die from cirrhosis of the liver I don't know if the man actually has cirrhosis of the liver. I'm just saying that in the internet streets, it is a known thing that he has an issue with alcohol. Okay. So I don't even know why I'm calling him a pastor because that right there, you're given to too much wine. You're already disqualified from the pastorate, but in churchianity, anything seems to go. What angle am I going to talk about today? I want to talk about matter of fact no I want to talk to the ladies ladies don't be a Loretta okay don't don't allow yourself to be used and abused when I say abused I'm not implying that he abused her but just if you're indefinitely someone's girlfriend for 28 years ma'am there is something wrong okay first of all this man I can't, I don't want to assume, but it is safe to assume that this man has not been chased for 28 years. I call foul on the church for even, at some point, somebody had to say something, Bishop, like you have like a permanent resident girlfriend. How is this biblical? Why are you unable to submit your desires under the Lordship of Jesus and wed this woman or leave her alone? No one ever said that. And if they did, they probably got dismissed because in the churchianity circles, you don't question the man of God. You don't do that. But ladies, don't be a Loretta. If a man wants to be with you, he will be with you. I don't feel sorry for her at all because she knew that that man did not want to get married and she chose to wait out in hopes that it might possibly happen one day. And then when he finally does propose, if y'all wanna go back and look at the proposal, you're more than welcome to, but I was so disgusted and embarrassed for her because instead of him talking about how much he loved and cared and just um, appreciated her and her loyalty and how no one else in his life has ever proven to be as loyal as she was and that he wanted to spend the rest of whatever live long days that he has with her. No, he didn't do that. He took the opportunity to talk about himself and what all the, all the reasons why he may not have wanted to get married. But now that finally, after it's all said and done, I'm going to get on my knee and pull a ring out of a Cracker Jack box. Ma'am, he humiliated you in front of all those people and he's treating you like you are the joke. The joke is on you. I actually don't feel sorry for you. I am actually embarrassed for you. So ladies, don't be a Loretta. Don't hang around in the wings 
waiting for a man in hopes that one day he's going to propose. If he has not made his intentions known early on by saying, I desire to be married and I desire to be married within this amount of time, anything else, he is wasting your time and he is playing games with you. We already know, we don't know with 100% certainty, but he doesn't strike me as the dude that is, you know, not going to be involved in any sexual impropriety, okay? This man's traveling all around the world with scattered behind all over the country. I'm pretty sure he likes the idea of being a bachelor and not being tied down to no one because he had already made it clear he didn't want someone, you know, regulating his comings and goings. So basically, he doesn't want to be subject to no one, which begs the question... Does he even submit to the Lordship of Jesus? Because he can't even do something as simple as, well, if I'm married, my wife, I need to defer to my wife in terms of who's coming in and out the house. Because he was like, I don't want to hear, you know, well, such and such show can't come over and you know she can't over. Like he basically, I don't want to be told what to do, which is very telling about his character. So ladies, don't be a Loretta. Two, if you're in a church, and your pastor is perpetually single and he is tied to just this one woman and it's basically known in the church that that's that's his boo but they're not getting married why are you sitting under a ministry like this on forget the false doctrine the man's life demonstrates he can't even commit to a one flesh partner how do we know that he's committed to the scriptures? We can tell he's not because he won't even commit in his own personal life. How can he even teach you on what it means to be a biblical and godly husband when he won't even do something as simple as commit and become somebody's husband? These are just things that I kind of want you guys to think about. And when we see stuff like this, don't be surprised, but there, there, there are lessons to be learned from this. Lesson number one, don't be a Loretta. And men, don't play around with a woman's emotions. And if she's allowing you to, think enough of her to let her go. Leave her in peace. Because at this point, she has wasted the best years of her life. And I'm sure if he's 72, she's probably in her 50s now. Like, there are going to be no children from this union. She has saved herself. Now, maybe she didn't want kids. I don't know. All I'm saying is, this is not a look, good look for the church. It's not a good look for a pastor. And ma'am, it is definitely not a, look, a good look for a woman of your age to be like, oh, Lord, finally I got the prize. Like, he may have two to five years good left, good years left in him, and that's it. I mean, I guess you'll get the bag, but the way he talks, he don't even sound like the type to put you in the wheel. It sounds like he's old and he's about to croak. And so what he's trying to do is wife you. So he got somebody to swipe the drool up. When he, when he really start going south, he got you there to wipe up the spit. And so that you don't just be listed as his special friend on the, on, on the funeral program. Anyway, let me know what you think. I can rant and go on and on about this all day long. Do you think, hey, April, you just, why are you being so harsh? Like, maybe he just wasn't sure. You know, it's 28 years was just not enough time for him to determine if she was the one or not. Or if you're like, April, you are spot on. He's trash. She's a fool. Throw the whole church away. Whichever side you lands on, leave me a comment and let me know. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Grace and peace.